everybody and welcome to this week's Tune In Tuesday. So with lockdown unlocking yesterday, I have a very exciting announcement for you. Beach Guardian will be starting their community beach cleans once more. Yes, I'm very, very excited to be doing our beach cleans again down on the beach with all you volunteers. I cannot wait to see you. The beach cleans will be starting from 10 a.m. this Sunday, and we hope to host a beach clean every other Sunday. So every two weeks, usually in the morning, we will be doing a beach clean. And there may well be more beach cleans throughout the year whenever there's specific camp campaigns. For example, we've got the Keep Britain Tidy Great British Spring Clean coming up. So we'll be hosting some more beach cleans around that time as well. And in the summer, we're really looking forward to welcoming the guests down to Cornwall and we'll be hosting some more beach cleans then. Now, the other reason for this video is that I thought it might be worthwhile outlining how we do a beach clean, just so we're all prepared, ready for the big day when we start beach cleaning together again. And it's coming up soon. As I say, it will be this Sunday morning. If you came to one of our beach cleans last year after lockdown one, you'll have got used to some of the changes that we had to implement such as the Eventbrite booking system. Now, this year, we're not actually going to be using the Eventbrite booking system because we can, so far, have groups of 30 on the beach. So we are just going to need you to click going on the event so we can try and monitor numbers as best as possible, but you don't need to book on Eventbrite any longer. So we will be uploading a whole list of beach cleans and we really recommend that you put all of them in your diary and try and keep as up to date with the beach cleans as possible because as we know, some of the rules and regulations can change quite quickly. But something we will continue doing is that when you come to the beach clean, all of the equipment that you could possibly need will be laid out on the beach two meters apart. So whilst we're beach cleaning, we really need to make sure we're sticking to that two meter rule, not just with the volunteers on the clean, but other people on the beach as well. You must try and keep your distance as much as possible. The best way to kind of monitor how distant you are from people is to keep in mind that you're at least two litter pickers apart from one another at all times. We will have sterilized all the equipment there will be a pair of gloves there. We do recommend that you wear these and keep them on at all times. There'll be a bag there, a reusable tent bag that Two Minute Beach Clean donated to us. This will be sterile and you can use this to put your rubbish in. Then at the end of the beach clean, just come and dump it with us and we will sort it out. Get the rubbish, take it to Trevisca Garden Centre to use for our workshops and we will keep everything nice and sterile for the beach clean the following week. So all you need to bring is yourself, we'll have hand sanitizer, we'll have all of the equipment sterile, ready for a safe and secure beach clean. So that's kind of the COVID health and safety. The most important rule is the two meter rule. But what about when you're actually down on the beach? Now, if you've ever beach cleaned with us before, you'll know that at the start and end of a beach clean, we do a bit of a brief of what to look out for whilst you're beach cleaning and how to keep safe while doing so. Now, as we're implementing these, this two meter rule, we really are still unable to do these big group gatherings at the start and end of the beach clean. So why not stay on this video and I'll do a bit of a show and tell now for you. So when you get down to the beach clean, you know exactly what to look out for. So as you're beach cleaning, the plastics are usually found in the strand line. So this is the high tide line where the seaweed washes in. In there, that's where the plastic usually gets tangled up and washed in too. So you don't need to go anywhere near the water uh, we will point out exactly where you're most likely to find the plastic. And whilst you're looking in the strand line, this is a very important ecosystem for the entire coastal ecosystem. Lots of invertebrates, sand hoppers and that kind of thing live in there. So don't go booting the sand looking and booting the seaweed looking for plastic. Just pick carefully with your picker and gloves to find some plastic. Now, the aim of the game of a beach clean is to remove everything that is not natural so the natural stuff must stay put the feathers the shells the seaweed the sand it seems silly to say it but the amount of times I've ended up having beach clean bags filled with sand at the end of the clean all of that lovely stuff needs to stay on the beach the plastic can come with us now when we're talking about safety of doing a beach clean 
Again, I've said you don't need to go anywhere near the sea, but you also don't need to go near to the cliffs. We've seen some really tragic cliff falls recently. And once you're stood under there, you know, the most dreadful, unimaginable thing could happen. So really steer clear of the cliffs, particularly uh, on the north coast here. We've taken quite a battering over winter. So just steer clear of the cliffs and the sea. If you see anything sharp, please do not pick it up. Notify myself or or my dad Rob and we will come and collect it for you. Dog poo bags again is another no-no. Uh, please do not pick them up. Let us know and we'll come and grab those too. Uh, as much as it's a safety hazard for you, if they go into the beach clean bags, I'm the one that's going to be sorting through that with some of our lovely volunteers uh, and getting dog poo under our fingernails is the most unpleasant thing imaginable. So the dog poo bags as well notify us. If you see anything suspicious on the beach as well, make sure you let us know. And apart from that, just make sure you have fun and have a good time. So what to look out for? We're saying that we're picking up the plastic on the beach, but there are some interesting things to keep an eye out for too. Now, if you've ever done a beach clean with us, you'll know that I am pretty obsessed when it comes to the crisp packets. Now, of course, this isn't just any old crisp packet because I'm particularly after the old, the vintage litter, if you like. Now, if you've ever eaten a packet of crisps, which I'm sure many of you have, you'll know that on the back of the, the packaging is a use by date. So we can see how long these items have been in the environment. I have an example of one here that I recently found. This is the Smith's crisp packet. And on the back, the date is 1977 which makes this crisp packet 20 years older than me. This crisp packet has been on the planet 20 years longer than I have. So really keep an eye out for the crisp packets. The secret is that they're in the sand dunes, but don't tell anybody I said that. And you'll usually find just a little bit of the packet poking out of the dunes and you've got to carefully pull it out and you find this perfectly preserved packaging. So keep an eye out for those, although you will have to fight me for them. Then we have the infamous Lego Lost at Sea. So in 1997, the year that I was born, a container ship called the to Tokyo Express was sailing past Land's End when a rogue wave hit the ship and sent containers into the ocean. Now, in one of those containers was 4.6 million pieces of Lego. So this is 24 years ago now and still to this day pieces of Lego are washing up on our beaches but the ironic thing is is that these items of Lego these pieces of Lego were all themed to do with the ocean. So you can find plastic Lego seaweed and pirate cutlasses and scuba diving tanks and flippers and the rarest of all is the Lego octopus. Now I have never found a Lego octopus on one of our beach cleans but some of our volunteers have. You know who you are. So they are around and you can find them and it does ruin my day if somebody else finds a Lego octopus and not me. So some other things that you can look out for are the natural things like the mermaid's purses. Now these are of course the egg cases of various sharks and ray species that we have off our coastline and when we find their egg cases it's a really good indicator of what healthy populations we have along our coast and if you find one show it to me and I should be able to identify what species has laid that egg. So there you're equipped with the safety knowledge and what to look out for on a beach clean. The only thing you need now is a beach to clean. So as I said, keep an eye out on our Facebook page where we'll be providing all the details of our upcoming cleans and it will be really, really, really great to see you there. So thank you so much for watching this week's Tune In Tuesday and I'll see you at a beach clean soon.